Now the spring game is over, the Oklahoma Sooners can now evaluate what they want to do with this roster. They've determined players and experience and what they've done and what needs to be worked on, what needs to be fixed, what needs to be tweaked. All of that's gone down. And so because of that, it's probably going to be a nice little shift when it comes to what the Sooner strategy is going into the portal. The portal ends on April 30th. And so we've got about a week and a half left of some, you know, craziness going on. So I anticipate Oklahoma not only being active in going after players, but possibly see a couple go out. Got to talk about that. Before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank y'all for pulling up to the channel. All right, so it appears that a lot of people are missing out on kind of what Oklahoma's doing, and I kind of like this strategy. I feel like it's a little genius in a way, but for the most part, I do think that it's a big, big deal on how they are approaching the portal. If you notice with a lot of the players that Oklahoma has been centered around, besides Lance Hurd, who ended up at Tennessee, the Sooners have been going after older players, ones with two to one years left of eligibility. And I think that's by design because these last two classes, actually last three, all three classes that Brent Venables have been able to put together, his two big ones, main ones he did, and then the first one in which was kind of a piecemeal and recovery of some of the players that were potentially going to go when Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch left and that staff Oklahoma seems to really like their positioning with what they have. They like those players being here. And to be honest, we haven't really seen many people leave. I mean, besides Dylan Smothers, as well as uh, Derek LeBlanc. I mean, that was really two players that decided to hit the portal for after being a part of that class. And Keon Brown didn't get to make it eligibility, but he's down there at Florida A&M. Could end up being something that could materialize later. But the key thing is, is that Oklahoma's looking for that veteran presence to add. We talked about this in a few other videos. We talked about it when we got uh, Branson Hickman on Sunday. Oklahoma needs those veteran bodies to help develop the young guys because especially in the trenches, right now Oklahoma is super young, right? Going down, I mean, everybody wants to see David Stone and Jaden Jackson play, right? Super excited about that right behind John Terry. Little G Baby, uh, Grayson Halton, a little bit of Marcus Strong, a little Champ Sanders, Devon Sears. But you need some guys that have got a lot of snaps. And if you can get some veterans to come in and help fill in some holes, because you got to have the extra bodies when you're going in the SEC. And so strategy-wise, it does appear that that's going to be the focus right now, right? You've seen that uh, the TCU defensive lineman, uh, Dominic Williams, came into town. He was here for the entire weekend. And it appears he's going to go ahead and take additional visits. Granted, I totally understand that, right? It makes sense. He didn't have the biggest recruitment back in his uh, high school days. He was a three-star recruit, didn't have a ton of offers. But as he's developed as a player, it looks like everybody now has interest in him. And for him, the biggest thing is going to be development and preparation for potentially going for the NFL draft. So he got a year left. So you want to do that. Actually, I think he has two. But you still got to get that development in. And once he develops, he could potentially go pro. Now, one player that did also visit that looks like is trending in a great direction, Jermaine Lallet, the defensive tackle from Louisville via Arizona State and Long Beach Poly, California. It appears that Oklahoma has a really good chance and a good relationship with him right now. Supposedly, he loved his visit over the weekend, and I saw that it was tweeted out. We've got at least... Two crystal balls had gone in. You got Colin Kennedy, our guy from Sooners Illustrated in 247. When he puts one in, that probably means he's got good information that that bad boy is done. Heck, he may have a graphic. So, of course, we're going to be excited about that. And I'm assuming that that's going to happen within the next 24 to 48 hours. Because I believe uh, he has a trip that uh, Jermaine had another trip scheduled for the beginning I think today, actually, is supposed to be in Washington. And if I don't see anything populated of him being at Washington, that's all I need to know. I think I'm good at that point. That tells me everything that needs to be known about that entire situation. And so I'm pretty excited about the fact that he is one that we looks like we've kind of won over. He has one year left of eligibility. He has a lot of experience. He did deal with some injury problems back at Arizona State, but looks like that's been fixed because last season he played all year. And so you need that big body, you know, 6'3", about 3'10", 3'15". Get that big body in there. 
be able to help um, Dejon Terry with that zero technique, the big nose guard. That's where that strategy seems to be shifting, right? Like I said, we're going for older guys, ones to bring in a lot of snaps and a lot of experience to help all of our younger dudes that we are developing. And then on top of that, the way that the spring game went, there's potential that Oklahoma will be looking at probably adding another offensive lineman, possibly a tackle or something. Now, like I said, it is we're sitting here on the 22nd, so we have about eight days left of portal action. I sense that you'll start seeing some follows from the staff and you see potential visits coming through and Oklahoma's most likely going to try to snag themselves another offensive lineman just to help with depth. The good thing is is Gary and Hatch, uh, Gary and Hatchet will be back very soon. Brent Venables mentioned that in his presser on top of that, Troy Evers expected to show up back around fall camp. If he gets back healthy from the knee surgery, that gives you two very veteran guys that can play to go along with the young guys. That's the one thing. We've got a lot of young players on the line. And so we talk about that ad nauseum. But I want you all to, you know, here, the shifting in strategy appears that Oklahoma's doing some, some smart moves to be able to prepare themselves to compete in the SEC, not only for this season, but to really fast track these guys going into the 25 season, which is the year I think a title run can definitely happen. As long as Jackson Arnold shows us that he is who he says he is. So want to talk about that transfer portal updates, hop in the comments, let your boy know your thoughts. How y'all feeling? What y'all think? You think we got a chance to land uh, Dominic Williams or Jermaine Lole? Yeah, I think we got a good chance there. Any other players you think we may go after? Let me know in the comments. You made this far like the content. Please hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Love for you to join this family. College football fans talking to OU football, college football in general. Having a blast doing it. So, we got another video coming. We're going to talk about some stuff. So, check out all of these. You can check out the live show. We really dove into the spring game and definitely something for y'all to check out. Let's talk soon. Peace.